Welcome into the first edition of Back to the Bullpen with Mike and Brett, myself, and Mike Stanton are going to break down the Ronel Blanco career game, a no-hitter, as the Astros get out of a slump and look to charge forward in this Blue Jays series. Let's go. I'm looking to the bullpen to bring my lefty in. Keep the lead and make your team look pedestrian. It's in your wheelhouse, we'll swing for the fish. You know it's money around here, man, I ain't talking expense. Strike one, heat a low in the way, you can't hit it. You know you want to start a rally, but you better forget it. Strike two, off speed, same spot, you're caught looking. Get ready at the plate, this time you're not cooking. Strike three, swing it out of the zone. You ain't even touch it first. Tell me how they gonna drive you home. Walk your back, walk your back, looking like we ain't cool then. The game's over, might as well put them back to the bullpen, oh yeah. Here we are, Mike. We are ready to roll, ready to rock our first episode, man. I'm excited. Back to the bullpen, baby. Yes, <laughs> here we are. What a song, by the way. That's yeah, awesome. I know. Mark Drew, local artist, did that for us. Um, Very cool. He sends cool. his regards to you. He said that he thought it was really cool that we were doing this together. And when I asked him to do it, he didn't even hesitate. He got to work on it right away. Wonderful. So, Mark Drew, thank you so much. Can't wait to meet you, Mark. You know, Mike. What a night to have our premiere episode. I mean, this is gonna this is gonna drop midnight, mm -hmm. um, or a little after, and we've got so much to talk about. I mean, this this team. Um, you would have thought the end of the world was here. Um, you would have thought that everything was over. The run was done, right. and the Yankees came to town and crushed the Astros. But as I reminded the people on my other podcast, you can lose four games your first four games of an NFL season and still make the playoffs. So surely you can still make the playoffs in major league baseball. What, what are your initial thoughts on Ronell and just his performance tonight? Absolutely amazing. First, we have to talk about what he did his last time out. Okay. He pitched, he pitched four and a third innings against the Sugarland space Cowboys. He struck out 10 and oh yeah, on that day, his wife also had their first child. So, what a day he had. Now, that was the last exhibition game prior to the regular season starting. And now, then you go to the, 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 get the Yankees come into town. And, you know, the Yankees just outplayed the Astros. I mean, it was just that simple. Um, you know, the, uh, three of the four games were pretty competitive, but the Yankees were able to get the hit. Well, the Astros weren't. So they lose the four. So you go into this series kind of licking your wounds. Glad to get the Yankees out of town, but, uh, you know, Ronald Blanco, Blanco, just an incredible start. He was, you know, he had a great spring training and he worked really hard this, this spring on a changeup. He's always been a two pitch pitcher, fastball slider, lots and lots of sliders. And, you know, he's kind of notorious for having good springs, but he brought this back uh, into the regular season. And the changeup was absolutely filled. He actually threw more changeups than he threw any other pitch. He had 20 swing and misses for people to let's let people know that is a really big number. He had 10 yeah. on the changeup alone. Wow. And he was throwing it in the zone and out of the zone. It was really a devastating pitch. It wasn't just one of those things. Well, they've never seen his changeup before. So let's, you know, uh, you know, give him the benefit of the doubt. He threw it all night long. I mean, he threw almost 40 change-ups, and the Blue Jays hitters just had nothing for him. Um, I mean, they weren't even really fouling it off very much. So an, an absolute dominant no-hitter by Ron L. Blanco. Just an incredible start. And by the way, first win of the Astros this season. That's right. So we've got some historic things. It was the first win of the Astros season. It was the first win of Joe Espada's managing career and it's the first time in Major League history that a manager has won his first game <laughs> by way of no hitter. That's you awesome. Know, you and I pre-show Especially from your were, number five starter. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Rune, you know, it's so funny. Everybody on social media, I think we found our ace. I mean, they've already <laughs> given this. They've already taken the torch out, like of, out of JV. Uh -huh. Skipped, skipped, um, skipped Valdez. And Who's Robert Valdez? Hand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was Justin Berlin. We got Ronald Blanco. Have you heard of him? But, awesome. you know, not only that, it was the earliest no-hitter ever thrown in the season. Um, Joe Espada gets his first win by way of no-hitter. The Astros have a way with, with pitching no-hitters and pitching records, two immaculate innings in the same game. 
um, from you had from Matana Garcia. But, you know, one of the things that, you know, going into this, Joe Espada told Ronell and Diaz and Ronell probably talked about it. Look, our bullpen is gassed. Yeah. You need to go as long as you can. Now, I'm sure no one said, hey, can you go a complete game, no hitter, throw 105 pitches and throw a shutout? But they, Ronell knew the job at hand. And see, here's the thing. I've actually been having a conversation with him um, off the field throughout the summer, just getting to know him. Um, I've gotten to know him through some personal friends. And I can tell you firsthand that he's been putting in the work. Sure. And all the stuff he's put out on Instagram, that's not just for show. This guy came in shape because remember, the first time he came up, there were a lot of expectations. He had some success and then he fell off. And so you wondered, who is Ronel Blanco? Is he a guy that really has a lot of hope but really can't get the job done? Is he kind of a Brandon Belak light type of pitcher? Because Brandon Belak has had his ups and downs. Sure. I'm not saying that Ronel's going to throw a no hitter every time he comes out there. But what I like about him is even when he got a walk, even when he got behind the count, he never changed his approach. He never rushed. He got back on the mound. He looked cool, calm, and collected, and he just threw the ball. And that's huge. And, Mike, how big is it that your offense decides to wake up? You have two hitters with two home runs. You have Jeremy Pena, who hits his first home run since July 5th of 2023. That's got to give you some adrenaline as a pitcher, too. Oh, well, what it does, it takes the pressure off of you. You know, especially with where this team was, 0-4, Yankees taking it to them, right out of the box, you know, sweeping the four game series. Um, You know, your manager hasn't won a big league game yet. I mean, it's, you know, this was a tough situation. Yeah. And you got to listen, Joe Espada, you got to tip your cap. He let him go out there and do it. I mean, that is one of the hardest decisions to make is do I take a guy out that has a no hitter? It's his first start of the season. Yes, you know, he is. I mean, he hasn't thrown anywhere close to 90 pitches, much less 105 pitches. Uh, but he let him go out and do it. And, uh, it, it, you know, we'll have to see how they approach the Astros are usually very conservative when it comes to situations like this. I would expect him if they can to give him. A, they don't have any off days, so that makes it tough. But, you know, give him as much of a break as you can before his next start, just simply because you know, he, he extended himself and yeah, he saved, he saved the bullpen, uh, but the offense was paramount. You know, the stress of the game is not on every pitch when your offense scores early, you know? Yeah. Uh, And that's why, that's why, and I'm not going to say he pitched any differently, but there just wasn't the stress of of the ball game on every single pitch. Like it was, if it was a zero, zero game. I mean, he was throwing the ball so well, it didn't matter anyways. But, you know, the offense did a really nice job of giving him a big cushion. Ends up being a blowout. Ends up being a laugher. And, uh, yeah, something that, you know, Ronel Blanco and Yiner Diaz. We'll get to him here in just a second. Yes. This, is a big, this is a big start for him, too. Because after four games, you literally heard people saying, boy, don't you miss Maldonado now. <laughs> Yonder Diaz can't can't uh, handle a can't handle a staff, and, and I'm yeah. like, how are we how are we diagnosing someone's career path or what the Astros are going to be after four games and a 162 game season? Right? I just Yiner Diaz had to command, and you know, I think sometimes the pressure might be on the catcher just as much as the pitcher. Oh, sure, because the catcher knows the game plan because. Now, as a pitcher, because you pitch in the major leagues 19 years, you and the catcher communicate before you go out there, after you go out there, you look at film, and it must be tough in a no-hitter to sometimes stick with the game plan because maybe you try to overmanage. Is that a possibility that could yeah, happen? Yeah, you overthink it. You overthink right. it. You you know, sometimes, sometimes us pitchers, we give hitters way too much credit. And well, I've gotten him out two times in a row on the changeup. I should go somewhere else. The way his changeup was rolling, I think both I think both Blanco and Diaz realized that they have no chance against this pitch. And he threw mm. it and threw it and threw it. When it, you know, he did he really mixed and matched well. 
You know, he, he threw 105 pitches. He threw uh, 31 fastballs. That's it. Just 31 wow. fastballs, 34 sliders, and 36 changeups. I mean, you can't get any separate, you know, like I said, he did throw four curveballs. But uh, if you, you add all those up, I mean, you just really didn't know what he was going to throw. And when he got in trouble, he really went to the changeup. I mean, it was it was truly remarkable. Ten swing and misses on the changeup, eight swing and misses on the slider. We've always known he's had a good slider. You know, right. you had mentioned uh, Brandon Belak. Blanco's got better stuff than Belak. I mean, he's got you know yeah. one of the problems Brandon has, and it's not guts. The dude goes out there and he gives you everything he has, but he doesn't have a bona fide out pitch. Well, Blanco right. now has two. The slider has always been there, but he was a two pitch yeah. pitcher. Now he's a three pitch pitcher. Now he has three weapons in his arsenal: a mid nineties fastball, a very good slider, and now maybe his best pitch, a devastating changeup. So, yeah, this is going to be interesting to see what happens going forward. But you know, as far as Diaz is concerned, you got it. You got to tip your cap. They had yeah. a game plan. We're going to throw the changeup. They knew the Toronto Blue Jays were an aggressive, a young team that likes to swing the bat. They're not there to walk. And exactly. uh, they had, he pounded the zone, attacked the zone, had a walk in the first, had a walk in the ninth. Everybody in the middle of the game, out in order. That's I absolutely love that, and that makes me think of when I know that I need someone dependable to cut my hair or to trim my beard, Mike. <laughs> I go to State of the Art Barbershop, sixteen sixteen South Friendswood Drive. They are our first sponsor. They have men's haircuts, kids beard treatments, hot towel shaves, facials and eyebrows. And I can tell you they're open on Tuesday through Saturday. Appointments are preferred. If you go look them up, look up State of the Art Barbershop in Friendswood. Ever Cruz is the owner and he, there you go. And he has agreed to be, he is my barber. I don't go to any other barber in town. And if you're in the Friendswood area, if you're in down in Southeast Houston, check out State of the Art Barbershop today because i guarantee you'll be getting a fresh cut and get your edge up there so look with with gosh this game so mike this is the first game that i've attended where a no hitter has been thrown i've been to walk off wins i've been to world series clinching wins game six 2022 i've been to a world series win game i was at the garrett cole 15 strikeout game I was at the beleaguered Albert Pujols game in Minute Maid Park. I saw the last division clinched in Astrodome history, but I've never seen a no-hitter thrown. And I didn't realize it was a no-hitter until the sixth inning. And that's and that's what leads me into my next topic for you, because you've been in the big leagues. Um, the first thing, the dugout. How do you conduct yourself? Um, in the dugout when this is going on. <laughs> you know? um, well, you know how stupid stitious baseball players are. And yes, right. I said stupid stitious uh, because it really has nothing to do with it. But you know, you know the, the, the old cliches. No one says anything to the pitcher. No one says the word right. no hitter. You know, everybody sits in the same seat. Everybody is on it. So even though this was a laugher, 10 nothing. Astros right. blow them out. Everything was good. Nothing, nothing but positive all day long. There's still stress. And, and to tell you the truth, it's probably harder sitting there watching than it is mm. out there on the field actually playing. Um, true, true. And, and you remember, and listen, luckily, well, I'm going to say luckily because it would be even better if it was a perfect game because then the stress is on the defense also. Um, but true. it wasn't a perfect game. But you still don't want to give up. You know, there was the 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 ball that went off Blanco's glove. Mm -hmm. uh, Dubon made a great play coming up, yes, you did. know, at a funky angle, fielding it, uh, throwing out the runner at first base, bang, bang play. You know, that was probably the closest play of the night. Uh, but the stress is on everyone. Everybody's sitting on you saw the, the you saw a celebration in the fifth game of the regular season, like they just won the pennant. Oh, you it saw was the guys walk, run out on. That's what it. Sh I mean, that shows you how they felt about this. You know, that shows you how important this was. Not just them winning the baseball game, but how well Blanco pitched and what it gonna mean to Blanco in his career. This is something that if he doesn't pitch another game, he threw a no hitter in Major League Baseball. That's huge, and and I mean, I think the fans so. 
I was sitting there filming it, and I was just kind of doing my own commentating. And I never used the word no hitter. Of I said Ronel Blanco. I said Ronel Blanco is six outs away from his first complete game. <laughs> I use the term complete game because, uh-huh. and I know, and I know TK and Blum do a really good job of not saying it on air because they it's, don't. Want and to it's, be told. Hard. it's and hard. It's hard. And listen, and to tell you the truth, the broadcast team—that's the one place it doesn't matter because you're really right. telling a story. Well, I would love to say I would. Well, I want to know. I'm going to have to talk to Steve Sparks tomorrow and see if they said no hitter because you're on the radio. I mean, you're painting a yeah. picture. It's even more important on the radio. Right. It uh, is. But knowing Steve, Steve is a superstitious kind of guy. Uh, I've known Steve for a long, long gosh, gosh, we go back to, I think, 1990. Wow. Um, so, yeah, Steve and I go way back. So I- I'm going to I'm going to say that he did not say no hitter. Awesome. Awesome. I love that. And, you know, you had mentioned, that, I mean, this is only his eighth big league start. Eight. Incredible. And, I, I mean, and again, you have Yiner Diaz hit two home runs. Jeremy Pena gets off the schneid, hits that home run. And then Kyle Tucker not only hits a home run to left field, but he hits a home run to right field, too. He, like, I spreads the ball around the park. The only thing I'm like, oh, I wish Jordan could get off the ground. He's not batting yeah. well, but. But you know what? This offense, because Jake Myers was hitting, he's hitting 300 now. You got several hitters in the 400s right now. I know it's early in the season. But a Jordan every once in a while cannot be hitting well. And Altuve cannot be hitting well. And this lineup, top to bottom, is reinforced enough that I think it allows guys a little bit of breathing room and a little bit more traction to not have to be perfect or banging the, you know, the ball out of the park every game. Well, listen, we're not the only ones that know how good Jordan Alvarez is. Right. Every pitcher in the American League, a lot of pitchers in the National League, they all know how good Jordan is. And it might just be a situation, you know, in, in game four of the games yesterday, you know, he hit the couple balls really well to center field. Really he almost well. had, he almost hit the chalk down the left field line there in the ninth inning, which would have tied, at least tied the game. Um, but you got to remember that he's the guy that has – the bullseye on him. What I mean by that is the other pitcher saying, we're not going to let this dude beat us. He is not going to be the guy. If we walk him, we walk him, but they've made some really good pitches against him. But listen, Jordan's going to hit. We know he's going to hit. He's done nothing but hit since he was probably, you know, three feet tall. So, uh, you know, it's just going to take time for him when they make a mistake for him to capitalize, but there just hasn't been a whole lot of mistakes. And the ones he has gotten, he just hasn't been able to get a result on them. And, you know, um, I actually spoke to a um, podcaster from from um, from up north in, in Canada, and I appeared on his show, and he said, you know, tonight we've got a guy that is pretty much a rookie pitcher, and you guys are probably going to take advantage of him. And the Astros did. They jumped on the ball. Altuve jumped on that first pitch. I think that set the tone. Sure. And every once in a while I'll say, oh, Altuve, let, you know, watch a pitch. But. He is yeah. he is at his best when he hits that first pitch. You can't take away his aggressiveness, yeah, because mm-hmm. that is who Jose Altuve is. And yeah, there are times he kind of drives you crazy. You know, he gets four at bats and he sees five pitches on the night. Right. And you know, sometimes when he's a little too aggressive, none of them might actually be strikes. But then there's times that he is just on fire, and you could throw it underhand, and he's going to square up the ball. Um, and, and so, yeah, you just have to kind of take the good with the bad because, you know, most of the time with Jose, most of the time it's pretty good. So you're gonna you're gonna take it. You know, he's already the best player uh, to put on an Astros uniform. When it's all said and done, he will be in the Hall of Fame right there with Jeff and Craig. Yeah, definitely, I believe that. You know. Mike, this has been a great show. This has been a great first show. I'm super excited. How fun is it? I mean, my gosh, we picked the perfect day to start this. Now, I don't know. Does this mean that we've, I mean, tomorrow night's game, what's going to happen? I mean, we kind of set the bar really high. So it's the wonderful thing about this sport that we call baseball. And you've heard all the cliches. You've heard it all. But you really know, you really have no idea what's going to happen. Your fifth starter is starting. Um, you know, it's only his eighth career start. He's 30 years old. He's wow. featuring a new pitch that could go either way. You yeah. know, he hangs a couple change ups. You know, we might have had a 10 10 game. Um, you just never know. And then he goes out and throws his first career no hitter. Just absolutely remarkable. 
and you had two people, and I'll close with this. You had two people that you could have seen this come full circle, Kevin Biggio and George Springer. And George yeah. Springer, there was one swing where if he would have got a hold of that ball, it probably would have gone through the windows at Minute Maid Park because he absolutely almost swung out of his cleats because that was – How many times have you seen George do that ball. and actually yeah. hit the ball, though? Exactly. He doesn't usually I know. hit it. Yeah, I was you like, know. if there's one guy that's going to break up this <laughs> no-hitter, it's going to be a Springer dinger. Gosh dang it. But – but hey, guys, thank y'all for tuning in to Back to the Bullpen. Look, you can find us on X on B2 Bullpen. You can find us on Spotify. You can also find us on Instagram, B2 Bullpen. And you can find us, it says Wheelhouse, Wheelhouse Media Group. But if, if you look up Back to the Bullpen on YouTube, you'll find us. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, we want to grow this show. We want to hear your comments, hear what you thought about the show on Spotify. Like us, give us a review. And um, Mike, where can they find you on Twitter? Twitter, also known as X, is Mike there Stanton go, 29. Mike Stanton 29. There you go. All right, Mike. Um, until next time, you know what? I guess with Ronel Blanco, you don't have to, but we'll just have to go back to the bullpen. <laughs> Gave the bullpen a day off. They drastically needed that. So incredible job by Ronel Blanco. Incredible job by the offense, giving him a good lead. This was a good first win of the 2024 season. All right, we'll see y'all next time, and we're out. I'm looking to the bullpen to bring my lefty in. Keep the lead and make your team look pedestrian. It's in your wheelhouse, we'll swing for the fish. You know it's money around here, man, I ain't talking expense. Strike one, heat a low in the way, you can't hit it. You know you want to start a rally, but you better forget it. Strike two, off speed, same spot, you're caught looking. Get ready at the plate, this time you're not cooking. Strike three, swing it out of the zone. You ain't even touch it first. Tell me how they gonna drive you home. Walk it back, walk it back, looking like